All right, so this knife thoughts video is going to be on this knife, and this is the Gradation Cutlery Titiute Cutlery number 47 Harvester. Specifically, this is the version in natural textured micarta, and the tank stamp number is 47P123. So 47 pattern, P for pruner blade, one or single blade, and made in 2023. So uh, I got this knife actually because I just felt like I hadn't done a gradation cutlery video in a really long time. And I know a lot of the people who have been watching my channel for a long time started watching and continue watching because I make videos on gradation cutlery knives. And it was a big part of why I started my channel was to show these gradation cutlery knives to people. Um, so I haven't made a video on a gradation cutlery knife in a while just because I hadn't really gotten one in a while. I did buy one of the small fixed blades that they came out with recently, but hadn't gotten one of the folding knives or a new model for a while. And I wanted to make a video. And then the other reason is that I really wanted to check out this textured or what's really jigged micarta because I've liked some of the textured micarta and jigged micarta that GEC has done in the past. And I don't think that they've done this specific type of jigging before. So I wanted to check it out. Now that said, I, I did know going into this that this isn't really my favorite blade shape. So this P blade or pruner blade is kind of what you might call a hawk bill. So you can see that it has a somewhat straight edge, but then it has a downward turned edge curved edge towards the tip. And so this is a blade that is traditionally designed for and used for um, outdoor agricultural and gardening tasks. So things like, you know, maybe trimming, um, you know, a, a stalk off of a, a plant or cutting twine off of a hay bale, something like that, where you're doing a lot of pole cutting. And while I think that it's a good blade shape for that, it's a very traditional blade shape. It's just not something that I personally, you know, would carry and use. Uh, I don't think that for me, the added um, difficulty in sharpening because of this downward curve, you need to use something like a, a rod versus a stone. So a, a spider crush sharp maker or a crock stick versus what I use, which is just a normal flat stone. A flat stone, you're, you're gonna not be able to sharpen this curved part as well. So I don't think that the added, you know, difficulty or maybe not difficulty, but extra steps or added equipment and sharpening is worth the added cutting ability compared to something like a Warncliffe. I'll show more of this knife later. So, you know, that's one of those things where I think it is very traditional. It's very, you know, historic, but just not something that really appeals to me greatly. An interesting thing about this blade is, as you can see, it doesn't have a nail nick. So it's designed to be opened by pinching. And it's very easy to pinch open. You definitely don't need a nail nick. Enough sits up above the frame that you could pinch this easily with gloves on. And speaking of that, one of the other things that I'm not huge on about this knife uh, is that the, the tip sits relatively high in that blade well. So considering, you know, the, the the, the edge is curved downward, that tip sits really close to the top of the blade well. And I don't think it really needs to. I mean, I don't know exactly if this is the case based on the, the engineering design of the knife, but I think you could probably drop this blade down into the blade well some and still be able to pinch it open really easily and not have blade wrap happen. Now, one thing with that is that this lanyard tube is kind of in the way. But, again, showing another version of the 47, you can definitely have the tip sit a little lower and still not have issues. So I do wish that the tip sat a little bit lower. Now, one thing that I like, I kind of was back and forth about whether I liked it or not, but it's definitely interesting, is the way the bolsters are finished. So these bolsters have a satin finish, as does the shield, but the bolsters have a satin finish and this area here is finished, you know, the, the polishing lines are vertical, but then the area within this rat tail bolster is what I believe this is called, 
uh, is actually horizontally finished. So it gives it a kind of interesting look because those, those finishing directions are different. Um, one other thing to note here is that I noticed there is kind of a machining mark in that dented area there. Uh, so I don't know if that's from the bolster being punched out or from being polished or what, but not a huge deal, just something I noticed and wanted to show. Um, the shield is pretty well done on this. Uh, there's some gaps, as you can see, but compared to you know a lot of greatest cutlery knives, it is similar, if not uh, a little better done. Interesting thing about these two knives here, so this is another version of the 47. I'll talk about all the versions in a second, but this is a 47 Viper. Interestingly, this has the same shield in a different size. So uh, I, I do like the shield. Uh, I forget right now exactly what it's called. I should have all that, you know, written down, but I believe it's maybe the Crest Shield. Uh, and I do like this shield, but it's interesting that it's different sizes on the same pattern. Uh, now, this is made well. There are no gaps between the back springs and the liners. The action on mine is nice. I would say that it's about a five. Pretty much perfect, uh, in my opinion. So, certainly well made. No blade play. Well centered. And just a well-made knife. And honestly, I got this knife uh, from Smoky Mountain Knife Works. I just saw them pop, pop up there. And it was about $103. And I think that it's a really, really great, you know, knife for that price. Uh, overlooking the, the fact that I don't really like this particular blade shape. But certainly a really, really nicely made knife for that price. And I actually have seen them for even less uh, at Knife Ship Free. They dropped, unfortunately they sold out um, really, really quickly today, but I believe there will be other versions um, for even less, for under $100 for the, for this same knife. So, you know, I think it's certainly a good deal for that price. And then finally, I really do like this textured micarta, which is, is really just jigged micarta. I think that it looks good and it certainly is super grippy. If you were going to use this knife as a garden knife, as an outdoor knife, as a, you know, farm knife, you are going to get lots of grip on that with that jigged micarta handles. So I really do like this jigged micarta a lot. I hope that they use it more. I actually emailed uh, Joan May, the sales manager of Gradation Cutlery, and uh, let her know that I hope they use this same type of handle more. But I keep telling you that I will talk about the other versions of this knife. So one thing is that the 47 has been used in several different configurations. So there's the Harvester, and then there is the Viper. So the Viper has a Warncliffe blade. Then they've also used it uh, as a farm and field knife, actually both with the Harvester or Pruner blade, and also with a sheep foot blade. I really wish I had, I, I might have bought one when they came out, not 100% sure. I'm just going to put this out here since I have it here and it can kind of uh, stand in for the farm and field version of the 47. But uh, I wish I, I had one of those. I think that would be a really great working knife also because these handles, while I, I for a long time wasn't really a big swayback person, I do think that they're really comfortable, particularly in those pull cutting uh, type situations. So there's a comparison in size to the 71 frame. Uh, just to keep with the theme, here is a Case Sodbuster Jr. Give you an idea of size. And then a Gradation Cutlery, number 15. So you can see this 47 pattern. Not a small knife, towards the larger end of traditional patterns, but not super, super large either. So pretty reasonable size, certainly a good size for a working knife if you were going to get one of these to use, you know, as a gardening knife, as a farming knife, something like that. And at the price of under $100 or about $100, you know, maybe a little bit more, I mean, an American-made knife, really well-made, and it has that really great traditional, you know, kind of authentic feel that Gradation Cutlery knives have. I think that 
this is a reasonable knife for that. Whereas, you know, a lot of grayish cutlery knives, I really love them, but I think, you know, a lot of the times you're paying more uh, than, you know, you're paying more for the historicity of the knife and, and the aesthetics and the feel than you are for, you know, something that's just, you know, to be used, right? Not that they can't be used, but I think that a lot of the times it is the aesthetics. Uh, and certainly that's the case on this knife also, but I think that this one, if you have that really specific use case of maybe you do a whole lot of gardening or, you know, you do farm and things like that and you want something like this, I think this will work really well at that price. So uh, I was happy to see that these came in at a, a pretty reasonable price like that because some of Gradation Cutlery's releases recently have been a little higher priced uh, than you know previous releases. So I was happy to hear that. So there was a little cameo from my dog decided he should come into the room and uh, shake his collar around a little bit. So we'll end it with that. Um, like I say, this knife, uh, I'm not a huge fan of this pruner blade shape. It's just not something that really appeals to me, but I appreciate the you know, traditionality of it. I appreciate how well it's made. And I think if you can get one, if you like the aesthetics of it, or if you want to use it for that specific use case, you're going to be happy with it. So, um, I appreciate you watching. If you have been waiting a long time for a Gradation Cutlery video, I appreciate you sticking, sticking with me. I will have more. I think I'm going to do more videos on Gradation Cutlery knives, even if there's something that isn't necessarily a must have for me. Uh, I just like to keep up with the getting to check out the new knives and, and make videos on them. So if that's something you're interested in, make sure you let me know in the comments. Also check out my other social media. I'm on Instagram and Facebook at Knife Thoughts and my website knifethoughts.com where I post articles on knives like this and knife related topics. And last but not least, as always, don't forget to go out and do good.